Hi, so today we're going to talk about what is the best cardio exercise for three two-minute rounds. Now there are a couple of ways of looking at this. The first thing to be aware of is that for a competitor, probably of any level really, you're going to experience a tremendous amount of stress and fatigue in the hours leading up to it. There's going to be a huge adrenaline dump. The other factor that you could consider is that a more skilled competitor is going to be more efficient and economical in their movements, which will conserve a lot of energy for them, but we're not going to factor that in. So we're going to approach this from the perspective that you're dealing with two competitors of otherwise all equal uh, skill level and abilities, and cardio is really going to be the separating factor between the two competitors. It's really if you're looking for your cardio to pull yourself away from the next competitor. So the first thing that you need to consider is the length of the event. So as we're talking three two-minute rounds, uh, there's a total of six minute work during the rounds and then you're going to have one minute off in between. So for all intents and purposes, you might as well think of this as an eight minute event because a highly cardiovascularly trained competitor is going to recover their tank up to full or you know, 80% during that minute off in between rounds. Whereas a competitor who's lowly cardiovascularly trained, chances are they're probably gonna get their cardio to about maybe 40, 50%. So the first thing you need to be aware of is that an eight minute event will be mostly aerobic as opposed to anaerobic. I have seen some misinformation on this issue with people calling sort of eight minute events anaerobic but in reality, the maximum amount of time that you can really do anaerobic respiration for is about two minutes. And there's a study that I'm gonna link in the description where they break down. Uh, it's looking at runners. Um, there haven't been that many studies looking at uh, combat sports athletes, but at the end of the day, it's the same cardiovascular system and the same kind of energy, exp energy expenditure. So we're gonna to have to borrow from that. And in that study, they show that over two minutes, 66% of your energy expenditure is going to come from aerobic respiration. Now, when you go to the four minute mark, 84% of your energy expenditure is gonna come from aerobic respiration. So if you're thinking of an eight minute event, probably it's going to be around 90 to 95% of your energy expenditure is going to come from aerobic respiration. Now the good news for those fans of high intensity interval training is that some studies have shown that it is as effective as a longer sort of steady state exercise for increasing your aerobic capacity. In terms of high intensity interval training, what we're talking about is roughly sort of 30 to 60 seconds of max effort, 90 to 95% of your max heart rate, repeated four to six times with about four and a half minute intervals in between. Now, while some studies have shown that high intensity interval training is as effective as aerobic training, a uh, longer sort of steady state exercise, there is some kind of uh, disagreement uh, in the literature. I think this kind of depends on which sort of test subjects that you look at. Generally against sort of untrained individuals, um, then it has been shown that high intensity interval training can improve their aerobic capacity. And sometimes also with actually highly trained athletes who have mostly focused on steady state exercise, it has also been shown that getting them to uh, incorporate more intervals into their training can improve their aerobic capacity. However, other studies have shown that steady state training is actually superior to high intensity interval training for building your aerobic capacity. So I would recommend that combining a mixture of the two is the best method of really improving your cardiovascular system and your endurance.